So we have a couple minutes, uh, but before, if you guys want to register, this is a hands-on lab if you want. Uh, if you want to register, create a Bluemix account, uh, and then go to hubjazz.net to link it to your Bluemix account, and then uh, we'll be, this will be the code that we'll be doing. So if you want to follow along. So we're starting in two minutes. Yeah, and by the way, if you have like iPads, it'll even work on an iPad. So I see you have an iPad. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to fork down some code, and then you'll just walk through, and everything's written for you, so it's just so you can do it. Yeah. Excuse me? We got some guy in, K in LA that's ready to, to help us out, add some special effects. It's a mini lab, so if you wanna if you wanna follow along, if not, we're gonna be doing it up here so you can see what we're doing. So it's not a requirement. No, it's all web-based, it's all on Bluemix and IBM uh, Bluemix DevOps services. Okay. So I think I think we want to get started. All right, guys, thank you for coming. Uh, so today what we're going to show you is we're going to show you how OpenStack, so in Bluemix, we created uh, an OpenStack service, an OpenStack Swift service that allows you to have storage and then integrate that into your Bluemix, uh, an, an application written in Bluemix. And so today, what we wanted to do is we wanted to show you how, how simple this is, how you, we're going to walk you through writing an application. Well, we wrote an application, you'll fork it, and use these IBM web-based tools and do this, do this demo. Uh, so I'm Manuel, this is Sean, and over here is Dan. And we work in uh, IBM, we work in the Open Technologies team, and our job is really to work with open, uh, first-of-a-kind customers, and partners to do these open cloud technologies. So our focus really has been OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, Docker, and we're trying to find new ways to, to leverage that, feed that information, give it back to the community, feed it to IBM, and what, what the, the effort here is we want to show you guys what, what we've been doing to, to take these technologies and how we're making them available to the world. So what you'll learn today is, first of all, what is, what is Bluemix, right? How does it build on OpenStack, on Cloud Foundry, and Docker? We'll show you <laughs> what features Bluemix Object Store Service provides. Uh, we'll show you how to, how to use IBM Blue, uh, Bluemix DevOps services uh, to create, to version, and to deploy your applications. Uh, we'll show you how, to con how an application in Bluemix can be used to consume uh, an, an external service like this OpenStack Swift service. And then we'll, we'll, we'll show you how, once your application is written, you can actually add other services like, like Watson or, or analytic services or mobile services. Okay? So again, like, like I was saying, this is a, a sort of a, we're going to show you how we're going to walk through the demo. But if you guys want to follow along, there really are three, three things you need. First is create uh, an IBM Bluemix account. So if you guys have a browser, this will even work on an iPad. Uh, get, go to Bluemix, create your account, then you go to uh, the Bluemix DevOps services, and then that's found at hub.jazz.net, and then that'll actually allow you to, to connect those two accounts, your Bluemix and your, ID, your DevOps services account. And then we'll, if you go to the, this, this link, the bit.ly link, what that'll do is that'll actually show you the, the repository of the code that we created. Okay? So what, what we're looking at what we want to do is we want to show you guys how easy it is to create a Bluemix account, 
how easy it is to then have your Bluemix and your DevOps services accounts created, and then for you to write an application, in this case a Node.js application, and then have that Node.js store data in an uh, uh, OpenStack Swift service that, that's available. Okay? So what you'll do is you'll create the application, you'll fork an application that's already been created by us, and you'll do that in the DevOps services on the web. You will provision an instance of the object store so that then you can, you can use. Uh, we'll deploy the sample application, and at that point, it'll be actually wired and connected into, uh, connected and ready to use your object store. Uh, we'll make some changes to the application, uh, and then we'll see how you can automatically have these redeployed. And we'll, we'll also show you, we won't go into a lot of detail of this, but we'll show you how you can actually bind other services to your application. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we hope that you'll be able to understand how the application can then, you can use uh, the, the built-in capabilities to scale your application. So Bluemix is IBM's implementation of IBM's cloud, uh, open cloud architecture. And what this is basically at the heart of it is that Bluemix is built on top of Cloud Foundry. Okay? And, uh, and recently, we announced that we've also built on top of Docker. We've extended, it, extended the solution to include Docker. Uh, so with Bluemix, you can rapidly create, deploy, and manage your cloud applications with containers or virtual machines. This is a platform as a service that's written for developers. So you take your application and you deploy it on the cloud. You don't worry about how the infrastructure, what, what it, whether it's running on containers or, or, virt or virtual machines, unless that's something that, that matters to you. Uh, since Bluemix is, is based on Cloud Foundry, you can tap into the growing ecosystems of services, runtimes, frameworks that are available. Uh, and this also includes Docker. So you can take containers from, from containers and Docker files and deploy them to the cloud. Uh, in addition, Bluemix adds some services that aren't available publicly. These include Watson, mobile, Internet of, of, of Things, uh, and OpenStack components. And then finally, Bluemix provides a dashboard that allows you to create, view, and manage your application services, view log files, view status. Okay. So IBM Bluemix DevOps Services, what this is, is it, it, it is sort of an extension to Bluemix that allows you to, it provides a continuous delivery platform uh, and, and it integrates perfectly with Bluemix. It gives you a way to develop, to track, to plan, and to deploy the software from a single, from a single interface. Okay? It gives you the ability to plan through the track and plan service right here. It gives you a web uh, development environment uh, that allows you to code, to edit your code, and to, to commit, view changes, uh, stuff like that. And then it allows you to choose what sort of source control you want. So you can have either, it provides native Git or Jazz SCM, or you can connect to an external GitHub repository. Uh, and then finally, it has automated testing and publishing capabilities so that you can have your application, once it's, once it's uploaded or a commit has been made, it can automatically send that up and deploy that in, your, in whatever your cont continuous tool chain. Whatever you define here, it can actually be deployed publicly. Okay. So Node.js. Node.js uh, is an open source cross-platform runtime. It's basically a, a, a serve, basically a JavaScript implementation that runs on a server instead of your, your browser. Okay? It's, uh, it's non-blocking IO API, and what this means is that there's really no, uh, it's a lot different than the way Apache works, and so it, the, the, a lot of the vulnerabilities that exist in Apache don't exist in Node.js, so everything's put on a queue. Uh, it's based on the Google V8 JavaScript engine, uh, and it, what else? Okay, and it integrates, in it, the, and it'll run on, on IIS or Apache, okay? And last year we announced that there's a foundation, uh, foundation's been, we, we've been moving forward to create a foundation with them, okay? So the Bluemix object storage, this is, an OpenStack implementation, uh, and it's hosted on, on software. It's an Elastic implementation that's hosted on software. It has built-in support for independent and isolated object stores, and there are two implementations uh, of Swift. 
One's designed for these Bluemix applications, and the other's designed for if you have a virtual machine or a container. Okay? So Bluemix has a complete catalog of over 100 additional services. And you can see a couple here. You can see that we have these, these Watson services. These include uh, like the ones that you see here. But in, in addition, you have stuff like Translate. Uh, there's a question and answer service where you ask it health questions or travel questions, and it answers back. You have mobile services like push notifications and, and replication. Uh, and then you have a lot of big data, uh, big data services. Like th an interesting one we found is this insights for Twitter. Uh, and then you have integrated services where it integrates with other, with other clouds and other, uh, and other resources. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna go through a, a live version of this. Uh, so let me hand it over to Dan. Okay, can you hear me? Great. Okay, so uh, there was a couple of links earlier, um, just so you are aware of those as well. Let me just pop back over to that slide. Um, so you can follow along with uh, the code we're going to be looking at. Okay, um, so if you've already signed up, uh, just head over to bit.ly slash IBM uh, dash BOS, Bluemix Object Storage. Okay, so this sample application, um, it shows uh, basically a simple um, create, uh, update, delete, uh, a CRUD application using the Swift Object Storage. Um, so basically what the user can do once they've cloned the code and pushed it to Bluemix, um, is to uh, choose a file uh, from their local file system, uh, go ahead and upload it, and uh, then see the listing and, and just read it back out. Just a sample file that we have here with a, a piece of popcorn on a belt. Okay, so that's the sample application right there. Really straightforward. After you upload, you just go ahead and delete. And uh, basically the goal is to show that you have a Node.js application uh, that's deployed, integrated with the Swift object storage service. And you could then go ahead, um, and after you just fork the code, uh, extend it, bind it to other services. Uh, for example, you may want to tie it to a download counter. So anytime um, people have pulled that image, uh, you can track some information. Um, and so the source code repository, uh, it's in a Git format. It lives out over on IBM uh, Bluemix DevOps services. Um, and essentially, it's got a, a bunch of supporting files, but it's got your standard Node.js um, application structure. Uh, there's a readme here that you can use to follow along. Uh, this is the most Im important set of steps to go ahead and recreate the lab. Um, so just uh, once you know, just get yourself familiar with that. But basically, uh, what you're going to be doing is uh, signing up for Bluemix, uh, creating an instance of the Bluemix object store uh, in the Bluemix catalog. Uh, there's two versions in there. Uh, you're going to pull the first one. That's for, the, that's for use with Cloud Foundry applications. Uh, you'll then, uh, with your Bluemix ID, sign into the IBM DevOps services uh, and fork this code. Um, there's a few settings there as you go through. Uh, you can make it a public project if you want, or just leave it at a project, uh, private project. Uh, we're not going to use any of the advanced um, track and deploy features of DevOps services, where you could create work items and tasks for a team. Um, and we're going to make it a Bluemix project. Um, so this ties it back to your account there uh, and lets you choose what sort of um, space within Bluemix uh, that you want to use there. Uh, what we'll then do is, once we have that source code, uh, we're going to create a pipeline to push it out to Bluemix. Um, so what this does is um, it sets up a system that every time you iterate on your application um, and you push uh, code to either a branch or to the master branch, what DevOps Services is going to do is just push your application up there so you, you have this very rapid um, application development uh, workflow. Um, and finally, uh, once you deploy the application, um, you'll be able to track the logs in case there's a problem, if there's a typo. You'll be able to see that in the UI and drill into uh, any of the uh, problems you may have run into. And um, you can, of course, browse through the UI, just similar to um, tools like GitHub. IBM DevOps Services lets you see diffs, lets you see um, formatted source code in there. 
And, and finally, once you have that code completely running, um, you're free to just, after this lab, go ahead and extend it how you like to see, uh, however you'd like to, um, to extend it. And we'll be here all week, too. So if you run into any questions or have some other um, um, opinions you want on how best to uh, deploy applications and go forward, you can always find us. OK. So I have set up a, a demo account in Bluemix. Just make sure I have my fresh account there. OK. OK, after creating my account, I'll log in. And this account I just created right before getting on stage here. So I'm following along just with you guys. Oops. And of course, got my password wrong. I blew that mix. Oops. Sorry. Lost the username. So I've logged into um, to Bluemix here. Uh, just make sure I have the, the UI expanded. <laughs> and uh, once you have an account, um, basically your resources within uh, the interface are, are grouped by applications and services, which are basically the, the primitives you're working with in a platform as a service. Um, and you also have the Docker-based containers and the OpenStack-based virtual machines. But we're going to focus on the CF apps, the Cloud Foundry apps right now. And um, the service that we want is the object storage. So I'm going to go over to Catalog. Uh, you can see they're grouped by watts and ca you know, all sorts of categories here. We're interested in um, the data management. And we're going to pull down, oh, we're going to create an instance of the object storage. I'm going to leave it unbound for now, because we're going we're to fork that code and push it. Um, but I am going to change this to object storage. OK, and just take the rest of the defaults. I'm sorry? Yes. Um, the reason that we had to name the, uh, the service object-storage dash, dash is the sample app um, is looking for that name. OK, so I've got my account. I can now uh, log in over at hub.jazz.net. And there's a single sign-on um, environment between these these two, so I can just uh, pull my my SAML token. Um, the first time you log into DevOps Services, uh, it may ask you for a repository alias. Uh, you can just base that on on your Bluemix ID without the the at email address. Um, so for this account, I just set up uh, because my user was demo at iBlueMX. Uh, I just called it demo at iBlue. Okay. Um, so when you first uh, log into DevOps Services, uh, you can see there's existing projects. If you have been invited to join other teams to collaborate on code, um, you've got invitations there. I'm going to go. I could explore and search for projects, too. Uh, but I created the short link earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it was um, bit.li. L-Y, I'm sorry. Um, slash. IBM dash BOS, Bluemix Object Storage. OK. Um, so this is a public project. I'm going to create my own copy of it so I can make modifications. And you can each do that by forking it. Um, I'm OK with leaving it private, as I said. Um, I don't need to add the Scrum feature, so I'll just turn that off. And uh, I'm going to make it a Bluemix project. 
which will tie back to if I'm working with another team within a different organization within Bluemix, I can do that. Um, so for my user account, uh, by default, your space is going to be dev whenever you create an account. So all of this, we can just take the defaults. And I just need to give it an alias. So um, mix. Okay, so I've got a local copy now. What I'll go ahead and do, um, I could edit the code if I wanted to change it before deploying, um, but since it's a complete sample ac application, I'll go straight to the build and deploy step. And uh, what this allows me to do is set up stages. So if it's um, a more complex application, uh, you can create a build step that could run some tests. Um, you can gate it through development staging and production areas. Um, since it's just a sample application, I'm only going to add one stage, and that's just going to be a deploy stage. Um, so that'll pull up a window here. I'll name that deploy. Um, for the most part, the we can take the defaults here. One important thing you'll need to do, though, is go over to the Jobs tab. Um, but by the way, this, this input, is what it's telling us here is that we're just pulling from uh, the forked repository that I just created. So it'll use the URL with your alias. We will add a deploy job. Um, and again, just take the defaults. Um, it's just going to deploy out to the public Bluemix using the same information. Um, and if you were using the command line tool, um, Cloud Foundry is an open source project. Um, so there's a CLI. It's basically showing that this is a value added UI on top of those command line features. Uh, you can always change these as well or modify your own deploy jobs. All right, I'll click Save. OK, so once I've done that, we will run the stage. So what this is going to do is uh, pull down the code from the source code repository, and it is then going to run those commands. And I can kind of see the progress as it's going uh, in the deployment job. OK, so it's pushed the code. It's waiting for the application to start. Um, and the sample app, just one uh, note here, it'll create a random host name for you um, at dot .mybluemix.net. Um, so you can change that, the manifest file that you have in your code. Um, you, can <laughs> you can use, uh, you, can, you can modify that. Um, I just did that so you know, we wouldn't have any namespace conflicts as you guys push. Um, but yeah, it has some ridiculous names in here. Gypsyish hairbrush. OK. Um, and each application um, that is pushed to Cloud Foundry, uh, what it does is it combines your source code uh, with a build pack. That build pack lets your application run independently of all other applications that are on a platform as a service based on Cloud Foundry. Um, it also means that you can scale out your application with several different instances of that. Uh, so one thing that we're not going to cover in the demo is, um, but once you push an application, you can do some interesting things if you have, for example, more than one instance running. Uh, you can do what are called blue-green deploys, where um, if you have an existing application, you can push in a new version and slowly roll out the old version uh, without any uh, without any downtime. Um, I only have one instance running, um, but that's how you would um, essentially do that. Um, great, so my application deployed. So what I can do is go back to my stage, and I can see that my stage passed. This will also, over time, show you a build history. And there's the URL to my application. I just click that. And just like the demo, we'll just grab the OpenStack logo. And pull it back down. Great, OK. Um, so we have about 20 minutes left of this for the next um, uh, few minutes. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and try to repeat those steps, 
we'll pull up the the application readme and um, let you guys work through that and if you have any problems with it or any questions um, we'll help you through that um, oh yeah sorry um, did you guys have any questions at this point before we move into any sort of hands-on billing sure There, it's right in the middle. So when you associate the application with the service, what do you get? Um, an account, a container? W what's the what's the Swift resource that you can use there? Okay, so the, um, so the question is, what actually happens behind the scenes? Basically, what do you actually get? Um, so the Bluemix catalog is providing an interface to the soft layer um, uh, object storage service, which is based on OpenStack Swift. So what it's doing in there, um, that's a large multi-tenanted cloud of, of services, it's creating an account for you there, and it's providing the credentials to your application in the form of an environment variable. So your application can dynamically just take that, and then each of you who've just signed up for it got a sub-account that does that, and so you never actually need to see the username or password. It's done that transparently for you. Okay. Um, any other questions? And uh, just before we get to helping anybody out, we just wanted to make a couple um, notes too. There's there's some more sessions uh, coming uh, later at the conference. Um, in this particular room, uh, if you want to stay here, we have a half day session. Um, so there's a uh, hybrid cloud use case with the federated identities. So during the keynotes, uh, you'll notice this was actually a, a huge enterprise feature that uh, really is important to a lot of IBM customers. Um, we had a lot of committers to the OpenStack uh, code base to enable this. Um, and then there's going to be an OpenStack heat based presentation. Um, and there's also another um, uh, high level uh, business focused um, introduction to the IBM Open Cloud architecture, uh, what you've seen on the coffee cups, the open by design. Um, what we've been doing at IBM is building all of our services and products on top of open source. Um, so as you've seen, Bluemix was based on Cloud Foundry and OpenStack and Docker. Uh, there's going to be a high-level presentation there. Uh, there's also a bunch of technical sessions um, throughout the week here. Um, some folks from my team actually were doing a, a presentation at the end of the day on how OpenStack, Docker, and Cloud Foundry come together. Uh, we hope to see you there. And um, of course, we are also hiring too. So if, there's, um, if you have interest in committing to OpenStack or committing to Docker or Cloud Foundry, um, come talk to us. Um, anybody in the, uh, there's Vince, Vince and Joanna in the back of the room. Um, go talk to them if you guys are interested in, in being committers to OpenStack and being paid to do that full time. Okay, great. So let's go back to this. Let me leave that one up. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Or if you just want us to come over and help you. It's not sharing. Um, shoot. So earlier you said there are two implementations of Swift within um, this uh, Bluemix environment. So what are the differences uh, between those two implementations? So they're right there. The, the two, the version one is if you have a Cloud Foundry application, that's the interface. They're basically the same back end but different interface. That's the interface that gives you the environment variables so that your application can then just use it. It'll have automatic, like the username, password, everything configured where the location is. And then in the second, the second one, the V2, is if you have a Docker container or, or a virtual machine, and then you want to mount and use that storage. That, that's the difference. One has 
the, the, the required credentials and all that for the Cloud, Cloud Foundry app and the other for the Docker or, or virtual machine. Sorry about the high lane, but yeah, this, so if you go to the um, documentation too from the readme, um, it'll give you more details on, um, on the different versions and how you consume them. Um, and in fact, all of the services within Bluemix that you see, the over 100 there, each come with um, documentation and sample app code that you can use to, to go further with these things. thing we could show is in Bluemix, show them how the, the application is, and then show them how we can add other services. Yeah, that's a great idea. So why don't we dig into a little bit of the sample app while we're just um, go through here. Um, okay, as, I, as we had mentioned, um, the entry point for Node.js is this app.js file. So just um, to just take a look into um, to how this actually comes together. Uh, the way Cloud Foundry works um, is that um, as you get those services provisioned for you, uh, you know, you can bind any number of services to your application. Um, what will happen is you'll get this VCAP services environment variable uh, in the form of a JSON object. So from any runtime, be it Node.js, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, um, and any other uh, runtime that you bring to IBM Bluemix. You can write your own build pack environment and, and run that on Bluemix. You'll be given this, this um, environment variable. Um, oops, sorry. And um, it will provide uh, details about the level, the tier of the object storage. Um, object storage is considered a beta service right now, so there's no um, uh, charging. It's a, it's a free plan. Um, other plans that come from IBM or from providers, they might have different tiers. So for example, there's a MySQL service uh, from a partner called ClearDB. Uh, you can buy in at different levels depending on how much storage you need. Um, and that'll be shown in the VCAP services. So you know um, basically your limits there. Uh, you have some endpoints in which to consume it that your application can dynamically use. Uh, the username um, and the password is all generated on the fly. So this application stores that into a, a local variable that it's using. Oh, geez, sorry. And um, the sample code will show you how Node.js, the Express Framework, uh, registers um, our just our front end application. Uh, there's a few, uh, the way this service works, uh, like a lot of the OpenStack services, is you log in, you get a token. Uh, the application holds on to that variable. And um, essentially, there's, there's the bunch of calls to the REST type API that are implemented in here. So uh, when you first log in, uh, you'll create the container and then all your objects within. And uh, we have some, also some URL calls that basically respond to the web requests. Right Here's our entry point at line 239. And um, if you wanted to extend this, uh, you basically would look for that VCAP services variable for your new service. And then uh, you could pull into, uh, for example, if we want to do the download counter, um, there should be a download root in here, or upload root. Sorry, was it above? Um, oh, that's the index point. Um, but basically, any one of these routes, uh, you would just tie in your, your sample code, uh, your, your brand new code to do that. Okay. Um, anybody having any trouble right now, or you guys have any other questions? Um, I'm not sure if this is the right session to ask this in, but um, in terms of that service and the rest of the soft layer environment, mm -hmm. if you have workloads in the soft layer environment, how do how does the public Bluemix backend services like this and the 
soft layer sort of IaaS services? How do they integrate, or do they? Um, in terms of user accounts? Or yeah, well, I just don't know if, if outside of the Bluemix environment, if you have a, a workload somewhere else in the Bluemix cloud, whether you can leverage the Swift service if you yes. subscribe to it here. Yes, yes, and that's, that's also uh, some of the reason why there's two versions of the Swift service in there. Uh, you can, um, your application will be the glue between all the services you provision in, in Bluemix, um, and you don't need to have a separate account over on SoftLayer at all to consume them either. Um, that's all handled directly through Bluemix and billed directly through Bluemix for all the services you consume. Um, but you can, you can bind as many services you want to your application and you'll be able to consume those. And, but, and there's a native soft layer object storage in addition to the Bluemix Swift. Correct, correct. And you can go straight to softlayer.com and um, sign up for that and use that directly. But I don't know if you can actually pull that existing service into your Bluemix application. Right. I was just wondering if there was a convergence at some point where there's just one object layer for IaaS type workloads, Docker workloads, and Cloud right. Foundry type it apps. Will be, it will be. In the, end, in the end, we'll have one service, yep. and this is it. Like, oh, okay. So, so you'll deprecate the, the old soft layer. No. We'll, we'll, the, you can consume yes, it however you like. We'll deprecate the soft yeah. layer, or this becomes a soft layer. This is a soft layer. Okay. Yeah, but in, in, in the end, we have multiple front ways mm -hmm. to get to it. Right. There's one physical service in the back, and that's running on soft layer. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. If you have any more questions, uh, we'll be we'll be around. And uh, and again, if you see the blue shirts, we're hiring. Great. Thank you very much.